Hi, I'm John Byrne with Poets and Quants. Welcome to our new series that's going to tell you every little thing you need to know to file a successful MBA application for a highly selective business school. We're calling this your ultimate MBA game plan. It's sponsored by Fortuna Admissions, the MBA admissions consulting firm, former gatekeepers of the best business schools in the world. And today we have Silpa Sarma, who was an MBA admissions file evaluator at Stanford GSB, which we all know has the lowest acceptance rate of any prestige MBA program in the world. She holds an MBA from Cornell Johnson, and she's now a coach at Fortuna Admissions. Silpa, welcome. Hi, John. Thanks so much for having me. Silpa will speak to us about how to get an ideal recommendation letter for your MBA application. So tell me what it was like to evaluate applications at Stanford, uh, given its incredibly low uh, admissions rate. It definitely takes a lot to stand out. And related to our topic today, one of the ways to stand out is to have really solid recommendations. So uh, what are your tips? My first tip is choose wisely. Choose based on who can really speak to your impact in detail. A lot of applicants are inclined to choose recommenders based on their titles or their alumni status if they had attended the school that, you know, that the applicant happens to be applying to. But the truth is that's really not what matters. Content of the letter is what matters here. Two of the most common mistakes that people make is thinking that if they choose an alum or someone with a big fancy title who's the CEO of a company, uh, they have an advantage. And in fact, they don't unless that person knows them extremely well. And then the second piece of this is recommendations that are vague are not very useful to an admissions staff, right? You know, a vague or a high level recommendation from a CEO is not going to carry as much weight as a direct supervisor who can really talk about how distinctive your impact has been and share why you stand out from this large applicant pool in terms of the performance and impact you've made. And then the second tip, if you find yourself in a situation where it isn't feasible to have your direct supervisor write the letter, choose another individual who can capture your strengths and your impact and your leadership potential. And feel free to use the additional information section of the application to convey the reason why you didn't request a letter of reference from the supervisor. This can be someone from the board, a client of yours, a customer, um, indirect supervisor who's familiar with your work. Right. And then the third tip is allow your recommenders ample time to write really detailed and comprehensive letters. So to stand out, your letters must contain specific examples of how you've made a difference and how the results you were able to achieve differed from other people in comparable positions. And for a recommender to write a letter like this, it's best to set aside some time to meet with the recommenders that you've chosen, explain why you're pursuing an MBA, and share the programs that you're targeting, and ask if they have the time to invest to write a detailed reference on your behalf. And I would imagine that you should be nurturing that, those relationships and getting to know people on a level where you can actually tell them, hey, I'm thinking about this. Here are some of the schools I'm a, I intend to apply to. Here's why I want the MBA. Uh, and bring them in almost as a collaborator on your decision, if you can. Absolutely. That's a great strategy, a great way to, to go about doing it. Now, a common dilemma often uh, regarding recommendation letters is this. You go to someone, you ask them to do the letter, and they said, well, can you draft something for me first? What do you say? I would mention to them that it's going to be so much more compelling if the account comes from them. Because truthfully, it's very easy to see um, within the whole application if a letter of reference came from the candidate directly themselves. And if the recommender is urging you to do that, and that's the only way that they'll do it, it might be best to just choose a different recommender. Right. What about a cheat sheet? In other words, should a candidate write uh, a memo reminding the recommender of things that they worked on and where they had an impact? That is absolutely advisable and it's fair game, you know, with a resume at the very least, or perhaps even like you say, you know, an outline or a bullet point summary mm -hmm. of key projects, uh, key contributions or, or leadership examples, things like that. Um, and that, um, that 
will likely be very helpful to them as they write the letter. Okay, so let's recap your three essential strategies for getting a great recommendation letter. Right, sure. So select recommenders that can really speak to your impact and your ability to generate results. Um, if you can't choose a direct supervisor for any number of reasons, choose the next best alternative and mention that in the additional information section, why you've done so. And then the third thing is allow the recommenders ample time to write really detailed and comprehensive letters. Ideally meet with them beforehand and really make sure that they can invest the time into this, that they can write the letter in their own words and support your candidacy. All right, so now how can a candidate reach you? They can sign up for a free consultation on the Fortuna Admissions website. That's the easiest way to do it. Terrific. All right. Well, thank you, Silpa. All right. Thanks so much, John. Thanks. So there you have it. Three essential strategies to get a great recommendation letter. You've been watching your ultimate MBA game plan sponsored by Fortuna Admissions, giving us some really great advice on how to secure great recommendation letters to help your candidacy at a highly selective business school. Former gatekeepers, people who've actually had to make these decisions uh, at the best business schools. This is John Byrne with Poets and Quads. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.